I've been in a gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What the breeze from the past will assist your irregular breathing handle. Got your ankle in your knee in a disagreement. And now your balance taking off of bereavement. They want to know what I'll be cooking up because then they think we be even. But I know, look, this this, so I never seen I'm it now. Jim getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What the backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What my team is the strongest, and we crush the competitors. Uh. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Fast Break here at HBCU Game Day. This past year has really been something with the specter of COVID hanging over the entire college basketball season. It was a little more than a year ago when everything seemed normal. North Carolina A&T, North Carolina Central, last game of the regular season, MEAC championship on the line. Let's go back to one year ago. The Aggie Eagle Hoops Classic, round two, Durham, North Carolina, the brawl for it all as the winner takes home the MEAC regular season title, the number one seed in the conference tournament, and all the bragging rights you're going to need to pop off on Twitter. Now, Club Corbett is lit, there ain't no doubt about that, but you might get the claws put on you up in the Eagles' nest, because these NCCU fans are about it, about it like Master P and the Gold Tank. The Eagle pride was all the way amplified and there was no need for any of that back and forth on the court. When you got the hottest rivalry in all of HBCU sports, deciding who gonna be the conference champs, all you gotta do is jump the ball and get it cracking. But before we get into the action, let's honor the moment of silence for Trevor Van Dyke, a freshman NCCU football player who lost his life tragically this past week. The Eagle family definitely had him in their hearts and minds before tip off. Aggies get it going early. Tyler May filling in for an injured Quay Parker gets a strong and one in the paint. a t gets the steal. Cam Langley, Devin Haygood, that's an alley oop. Aggies up six. Tyrone Lyons drills a three. Aggies up 13 with 11 minutes left in the half, but the Eagles start to soak. CJ Kaiser gets the nice take to the rack. Nicholas Fennell, the reverse lay bucket plus the foul. Fennell back to work. This time he cleans up the glass with an acrobatic putback. Then another grown man take to the basket. This one plus a foul slick Nick doing work in the first half. Here he gets the steal. Catches a body, the Eagles down two, and the birds in the trap are teed with two minutes left in the half. The MEAC player of the year, Jabri Blunt, big dogs his way to the bucket for two. NCCU takes a one point lead into the break, 40 to 39, and Blunt had the energy in the Eagles' nest on 10. But the Aggies get on the run in the second half. Cam Langley finds Ron Jackson on the line. Ron Ron Jackson, here comes the boom. a and back up six. Devin Palmer, he got a little something in his bag too. He gets the rebound, the nice scoop shot layup plus the foul, and both teams were locked in down the stretch. Dre Day Jackson, bucket and a foul. Jabri Blunt, jump hook in the lane. Cam Langley goes strong to the bucket through contact. Then it's another Greensboro native, Jordan Juice Perkins, he gets the lane. Dre Jackson back with a tough and one. But so is Jabri Blunt. Some heavy tournament vibes on display in this one, and the game is tied at 65 with six and a half left to play. Eagles looking for the lead. CJ Kaiser gets the bucket. The foul, he beats on his chest as NCCU goes up by three.
Then we got Cam Langley taking it right into Jabri Blunt's chest. Blunt almost slaps the rock away, but Langley keeps control of the ball and somehow manages to get it in the basket. Kaiser over Devin Haygood for two. Jabri Blunt gets the steal. Nick Fennell gets the shooter's touch on the lay and the Eagles are up seven. Four minutes left to play and it's going down in the Bull City for the MEAC Championship. Tyrone Lyons looking to bring a t back with a three. He misses, CJ Kaiser gets the board. Finds Jabri Blunt who puts the exclamation point on an 86-80 NCCU win. The Eagles get their fourth regular season championship in seven years. The crowd was turned. The MEAC player of the year had some words for us at HBCU game day and the Nets came down in McClendon McDougal Arena. Next stop, the scope in Norfolk VA for a chance at a trip to the big Dance. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What? The backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. What? The breeze from the past will assist your irregular breeze. Okay, joining us now, he's the head coach of those North Carolina Central Eagles. But what a difference a year makes. Let's welcome in Coach Lavelle Moten from Durham, North Carolina. Coach Moten, would you have ever thought when you were there? You guys beat a and you head to the MEAC tournament. Did you ever think at that moment that the next 365 days and counting would be as strange as they have been in all of sports and particularly college basketball? Man, first, thanks for having me. Um, to answer your question, not at all. Like, it, it just it just allowed me to reminisce as you were speaking about it. And I was like, wow, this is it's the perfect mantra. It was all good just a week ago. Because when we won the regular season title, like, it was nothing but celebration. Then the following week, we go to the MEAC, and we experiencing the cancellation. And from that point on, we've just been quarantining and going through uh, all the difficulties and challenges that's associated with this pandemic. Um, so it's, it's been shrewd to say the least. Let's just put X's and O's aside. Like you are helping raise young men. Like you are a father figure to them. What, what type of challenges has that presented in just you trying to, you know, shape and mold these guys, get them ready for the world when the world is, is so different, at, at least for now? Yeah, it's been really difficult uh, to say the least, especially for my seniors, right? But you know, the one thing I didn't allow them to do and I'm not going to allow them to do is feel sorry for themselves and have a pity party because everyone is going through the same thing and, and, and experiencing it, whether directly or indirectly. And, you know, I, I've had some personal friends who've been touched with it and, you know, they lost their lives. Right. And so what it's done is put basketball into its proper perspective. Like, you know, and the other thing, including myself, this goes for me. Once you are a part of a basketball team, then every year of your life, you've lived your life being a part of a basketball team. And basketball has been at the forefront. Now that that's taken away, it's like, what is your secondary identity now? Like, who, who are you really if you take this basketball away? So I tried to use it as a teaching and educational point, you know, for our guys. And I said, listen, man, adversity introduces a man to himself. Everyone always says what they're going to do until it's actually done. It's, it's the Mike Tyson adage. You know, everybody got a plan until they hit with, uh, get hit in the mouth. Well, we've been hit in the mouth um, four times with, with COVID. You know, he, he, he killing us right now. He's the boogeyman. And so I, I say, man, it's, it's just about, life is about 10% what happens and 90% on, on how you respond. So let this serve as a life lesson as you enter into this world. Man, I, I've known you for a long time, you know, since since the early 80s, maybe even late 70s, you've been able to pick up a ball, be involved with the game pretty much whenever you want it, like on demand. It's been a weekly part uh, of your life. Well, what have you learned about yourself now that, you know, you might be ready for a game and you get a call that says that it ain't happening? Yeah, I, I, I learned those same lessons that I'm trying to apply to my team, I had to apply to myself because... Since I was five years old, I've always been a part of a basketball team. 
right? And now at 40, that's 41 years that's passed by that I've taken being a part of a basketball team for granted. It's, it's become secondary, it's become the norm, it's become my extended family. Now that I don't have basketball at the forefront, you know, it forced me to, number one, spend time and understand who I really am as a person and, and, and you know, other interests that I have involved. And the second thing it made me do was, was go back and, and tighten up some things that I really didn't have uh, control over the way I should have, right? And so I've looked into further investments, right? Uh, investment for my kids' future. Some of these things I did, but I didn't have a full and complete understanding of what I was doing. This COVID made me sit down because I ain't had nothing else to do. And now go take a look at this trust fund and take a look at this educational plan for our sons and our daughters and life insurance policies and all of those things. So it really made me slow down and, and pay attention to other interests. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to the Fast Break. I'm Tali Carr in Atlanta. Joining us from Durham, North Carolina, it's Lavelle Moten, head coach of the North Carolina Central Eagles. Uh, Lavelle, you have recently been involved uh, with some, some serious business. Like, it's so interesting to, to, to read the paper, and, and I, I still read the paper. Like, look at Lavelle, man. He's investing in the community. Like, th this is my guy that does new edition dance moves all the time. <laughs> tell, tell us about you becoming an adult there in Raleigh, man. Yeah, this adulting thing has always been overrated, man. But, you know, like, you know me for a while, Tyler. So I, I always had outside interests other than basketball. People that don't know you, they always try to... Um, attach you directly to your vocation and your career. And I tell people all the time, basketball is what I do. It's not who I am. You know, I felt and I feel as though God gave me many talents and I just tend to explore them. One of the things I wanted to do was obviously through my Bear Cares Foundation is continue to give back um, to a community that's always embraced and supported me since I was a kid. Um, so we have a plethora of things from a single mother salute to backpack giveaways to um, a, a TV show called The Connect, where we're giving youth a platform to express themselves. Um, food distribution, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, and then I, I wanted to become a businessman. Um, you know, you have to take advantage, and I studied those before me. You have to take advantage um, of the legacy and the platform in which you create. So we wanted to develop a, I saw all this gentrification going on back in my hometown and particularly in my old neighborhood. And I was like, nobody that looks like me is benefiting from it, but we're the one who experienced all the pain from these circumstances, right? And I said, so if anyone is gonna benefit from it, it, it should be the people and the families that endured the pain. Everyone seems to profit off the pain of us, except for us. So just to be able to have some skin in the game and, and, and be able to not only construct our business, but also be in the midst of it, you know, within a month's time is truly a blessing. You know, it's it's so crazy when you think about, you know, some of the places that we're from and our friends are from. And, you know, I go back and, and visit Raleigh uh, and my mom will, you know, we'll be driving around and, you know, you look at where, you know, Chavis Heights and Walnut Terrace and some of these places, you know, the, the where the hood used to be and you see what's there now and you're like, wow, <laughs> like, like, how did that happen? So it's it's so beneficial that, that we are in that game. So that that's really amazing stuff there, man. You don't even notice it anymore. You know, they have landscape and sidewalks and 
and people that don't look like us are walking poodles. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is this? Right? We're from pit bulls to poodles. <laughs> For real. Uh, look, King is no longer loose. Uh, <laughs> you, you've been involved in, in a new platform uh, on, on ESPN Plus. You have the docu-series uh, going uh, that's focused on your team. And boy, they, they picked a heck of a year to focus on the Eagles. <laughs> and a good friend of yours is involved in that uh, as an executive producer, and that's Chris Paul. What has that journey been like for, for the whole world now to be able to see week to week what life is like for the Eagles? You know, it's been phenomenal. It's been truly a blessing. Um, you know, when, when all of this stuff began, um, it began kind of at the height of the racial unjust in the country, um, particularly the George Floyd situation. And, um, I had made some comments about coaches in our in our uh, vocation about you know we're we're remaining quiet when um, black kids and young black men and women are being killed in the middle of the street and we have influence we have power but we're not saying anything on these platforms but these are the same people who have the same skin tone and complexion that's made our grandkids kids rich. Right. So let's not take ourselves that serious as a basketball or football coach. We're able to survive because the majority of the, the, the kids that we recruit are the complexion of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. And they run up and down a football field or shoot a basketball. And so immediately after that, it became everyone hitting me up um, from Serena Williams. Uh, team. They wanted to do a documentary. Then the rock with seven pounds, then KD with 35 inches and, um, then Chris Paul and many, many more. So I just advised him to go through my, my agent and I had to select a production company and I told him, please include my basketball program. If you're going to do anything on me, because this is a, a, a direct extension of me. And I, I chose Chris because of our pre pre-existing relationship. I know Chris and CJ and the Paul families probably since they were nine or 10 years old. So we've always had a good rapport. And I wanted it to be a North Carolina, you know, loyalty thing. And, you know, I trusted Chris and I trusted his team with Odip Productions. And later on, Stephen A. came on, uh, which I thought was huge because he actually attended an HBCU as a, um, and now he, once he signed on as an executive producer, it gave it another set of eyes to really bring out this docuseries in its purest form. You know, I wanted to, Number one, my job is easy because I get to be myself. I said, y'all just use the edit button. <laughs> like, that's, that's just, this ain't loving hip hop. I ain't gonna be Stevie J and don't want all people go crazy. Like, nah, I get to just be myself. This is the true representation of who we are as a program and university each and every single day. And, you know, we don't shy away from that. But I also wanted to shine a light on how incredible our university is, but also shine a light on some of the financial challenges that we have. Right. We didn't want to mask and disguise those things. We want to say, listen, yeah, we're a successful basketball program, but we've done these things in spite of. Um, and we haven't been on a level playing field as our contemporaries, that, you know, with Duke, Carolina, NC State. And not only that, what is a level playing field? And so we wanted to show you all these broad perspectives and, and also how we coach. We we coach a lot different from these these guys at Power Fives. They have a staff that they delegate some of those um, emotional responsibilities too, you know, so they don't really concern themselves with that. When they leave, they get to go and they do a serious XML uh, radio show. I can't do that. Uh, Maurice need me at all times, right? <laughs> at, at, at any time of day. And, and so I welcome that. I embrace that and I accept that. And so we just wanted to kind of peel back the layers and allow, you know, the world to take a peek behind the curtains of what really goes on in the coaches world, especially at North Carolina Central. And it's been rave reviews so far. So the second episode is gonna show uh, February, February 24th. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What? The backboard I crash, slam the rock to a pebble. Okay, welcome back to the Fast Break, everyone. I'm Tolly Carr. Lavelle Moulton, head coach of the North Carolina Central Eagles. During the break, we were kind of laughing. Lavelle said, man, you, you're a natural at this. Lavelle, let me tell you when my broadcasting career started. I didn't realize it was the day, but this was the day. Uh, ninth grade, you and I, JV basketball practice. You were probably scoring, you know, 20, 25 points. I was trying to hustle for a loose ball just to, to get a clap from the coach. Uh, so, so probably Ivan or one of those guys elbowed me in the mouth. So I, I go up to Coach Williams. I say, Coach, my lip's bleeding, man. I got hit. Can I go to the water fountain? 
Now, I, and, and rinse it out, right? So our, our coach is an Elizabeth City State University graduate, so we, we got the whole HBCU thing going early on in life. He looks at me, pauses forever, pregnant pause. I'm like, what's going on? Can I get some water? He said, blood? Boy, you better drink that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that exactly. <laughs> hey, I remember that. <laughs> they don't know how we grew up, man. They just don't know. <laughs> man, like, what What have you learned, like, about the power of media and how you tell? I mean, you've used social media a as an expert, but to have a series that's, that's airing on the ESPN platform, like, what type of things have you taken away from, man, this is really a huge vehicle for us? Man, you know, I, I had experience with it um but it was more so for a day um being as though you understand the power of national television when you go to the ncaa tournament right it's, it's nothing like it like i don't care who your marketing exec is at your university they can't devise a game plan that can remotely touch you know what you get an opportunity to, to do in the NCAA tournament when you're playing on a friday night primetime television like that that just brings a different measure and I also knew the impact because every year we've been to the tournament our enrollment has went through the roof right and and so we understand where that comes from with the ESPN platform this was different because it was a continuation right on what everyone considers the total sports network and everyone is invested in ESPN in some capacity you know whether it's ESPN 1 ESPN 2 ESPN U you know, even the streaming services, everyone has access and it lives there forever. And what I've learned is that I already knew that people love the culture of black people, right? It's, it's, it's who we are, it's, it's hip hop, it's R&B, it's rock and roll, it's, it's all of those things. People love our culture. And so I knew that there would be an initial attraction for everyone, all races, creed and colors to see you know, what goes on beyond the scenes and behind the scenes of this HBCU. And so I just knew all we had to do was be ourselves. And that's a sole attraction for everyone else, right? I, I get requests for people to want invites to our practices all the time, right? And I just don't allow it all the time because, again, I'm not willing to peel back the curtains for everyone. But with this docuseries, the one thing I learned is that all you got to do is be you. All HBCUs have to do is be us and, you know, we'll attract the world. I've been in the gym getting my level up. Fenders getting gas, so I mash on the pedal. What? The backboard.